Wa salatu wa salamu ala muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam My brothers and sisters, salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Welcome to our talk It's uh, called Prepare for Ramadan, Prepare for Life We are very delighted and honored to have Imam Siraj Wahaj Who have come all the way from America And alhamdulillah, by the grace of Allah, we were lucky to have him um, Available for us for today, alhamdulillah I know more people are on their way, but we will begin without further ado. Uh, we will be beginning our program with the recitation from um, the Quran, and we are also waiting for Imam Rashid to walk through the doors any minute. He's uh, had to travel and then come back, inshallah. But before he does, let me just give you the breakdown of what's going to happen. Imam Siraj is going to speak for 20 minutes, 25 minutes, um, until we stand for Dhuhr prayer. After Dhuhr Salah, we will resume here and that we will do um, a bit of fundraising, a bit of a quiz, getting you all in the mood to listen to the second half of his uh, talk which will be a dua but the conclusion of his talk inshallah. I don't want to uh, stress him too much with uh, pressurizing him to talk for too long but he's here <laughs> all the way from America. I know he's making funny faces but alhamdulillah. Um, I, look, I have known Imam Siraj all my life. When I was 17, 18 year old kid, I used to follow his uh, lectures and travel around the country just to listen to him. Um, so I have seen uh, Imam Siraj, um, his energy and his uh, level of excitement is infectious. But I also have, I have also got to be careful that I don't uh, overstep my mark. So alhamdulillah, I'm very, very, very grateful. Um, so brothers and sisters, um, the outline of this particular program is simple. We have a message that we have acquired with the grace of Allah, with the help and support of you. Alhamdulillah, may Allah bless you all. We've raised 3.5 million and we have paid that already. We've got 3.15 million to raise. And I'm hoping to raise that today from you before you leave. <laughs> You're looking at me thinking, huh? Well, it's all possible. If we could raise 3.5 million from you over the last three, four months, why not another 3.15 million? I think, inshallah, I have every confidence that it will happen, inshallah. Um, and that's why we are doing all these activities and also it's a preparation for Ramadan. Ramadan is just around the corner. As you can see we've got a marquee over there. In the month of Ramadan we'll be um, moving all our activities over there. Our Salah, our Taraweeh, our Iftar, um, our uh, Suhoor program, whatever we do will be over there inshallah. It's more or less ready. And it is because of you as volunteers who have made it possible. Uh, this room will be available for the activities, but we will probably be doing some building work here. Looking at putting the mezzanine floor, getting the ceiling sorted out so that after Ramadan or a little bit after Ramadan, it is ready for full use. It's, all, it's an ongoing project. So I hope and I pray you can help us. You can support us as we progress. And it is through your help and support and the grace of Allah that we've come so far. When we started, we had with a big fat zero in our account. We didn't even have a bank account when we started this project. I don't know that you know this. We didn't have a bank account. But Alhamdulillah, we've done very well. So we pray to Allah Azza wa Jal to give us the strength and the abilities to be able to carry on doing more. Without uh, any delay, I would like to invite our Imam, Imam Rashid, who is our everyday uh, Imam here, the one from whom we learn and we listen to his wonderful recitation. We're grateful to him as well. Uh, to begin the program with a uh, brief recitation from the Quran and then I will hand it over to Imam Siraj if that's okay. Rashid, come on. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم كتب عليكم على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم 
لعلكم تتقون أياما معدودات فمن كان منكم مريضا أو على سفر فعدة من أيام أخر وعلى الذين يطيقونه فدية طعام مسكين فمن تطوع خيرا فهو خير له وأن تصوموا خير لكم إن كنتم تعلمون شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات وبينات من الهدى والفرقان فمن شهد منكم الشهر فليصم ومن كان مريضا أو على سفر فعدة من أيام أخر يريد الله بكم اليسر ولا يريد بكم العسر يريد الله بكم اليسر ولا يريد بكم العسر ولتكملوا العدة ولتكبروا الله على ما هداكم ولتكبروا الله على ما هداكم ولعلكم تشكرون وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانِ فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ صدق الله العظيم. Thank you very much, Imam Rashid. What a wonderful voice Allah has given him. I'm always jealous of his voice. But you know what? It's okay. It's okay to be jealous of something good like that. You know? We should be jealous of somebody's piety, somebody's taqwa, somebody's ability to read the Quran. Those jealousies make you do better, inshaAllah. I hope you do. You feel jealous about good things. Don't worry about people's looks and don't be jealous about it. Don't be jealous about people's shoes. It's a waste of time. It's on their feet. Be jealous about those wonderful characteristics people have that you can emulate them and become like them or better than them, inshallah. My brothers and sisters, thank you very much. So, um, Imam Siraj, how do, I, how do I introduce him? I don't know whether I'd like to waste your time or his time in introducing too much about him. But Imam Siraj is one of those, he's standing up telling me don't. <laughs> Just a little bit, Imam Siraj, if you don't mind. He is the Imam from uh, Brooklyn, New York. I had the greatest opportunity and pleasure of visiting his masjid. When he founded his masjid 40 years ago, it was about 25 black men who began this project. Now, he said less than 25% of his congregation are black. Majority are from all 39 different nationalities, alhamdulillah. He started with small 25 people. Now his congregation is more than a thousand at uh, regular prayers and Jum'ah, subhanAllah. It's grown and they have uh, a plan to break down the current building and make it into a bigger space. May Allah make it possible, inshaAllah. Uh, brothers and sisters, Imam, uh, when I was speaking to Yasir Qadi, Yasir Qadi said to me, when you introduce uh, 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 Imam Siraj Bahad, please call him the granddaddy of all the <laughs> Du'at and the fundraisers and the scholars and activists in America. He truly is the leading light. When others were not as active, he was traveling up and down, not only in America, but across the globe, inspiring young people. 
One secret, he used to know Muhammad Ali very well. For those of you who want to know uh, about Muhammad Ali, ask him later on. But today he's focusing on talking about preparing for Ramadan, preparing for life. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, please pay attention. We have got two-part program. He's going to start and he's going to conclude later. So don't run away straight after the prayer. We've got activities. There's also going to be a quiz program. And one person will win something at the end of the quiz. There'll be some fundraising. There'll be Imam Siraj's conclusion. And there'll be barbecue, hopefully, if they turn up. A food for you all to eat and enjoy. Inshallah, may Allah accept it all. I'll hand it over to Imam Siraj. Um, brothers and sisters, we thank Allah the Almighty to have the privilege to address you for a few moments, actually. Um, Tina Turner once asked the question, what does love have to do with it? And that's what I'm going to talk about. Yes, I'm going to talk a, a moment about Ramadan, but I'm going to give you uh, this foundation about love. Amr ibn al-As asked the um, Prophet who among mankind do you love the most? He said, he said, he said, Aisha. Um, what was the second question he asked? Hmm? Who's next? Most people say that. Ah, yes. Mina Rijal, among the men. Because if he said who's next, he might have said Fatima or Khadija. <laughs> but among men, Abu Ha, Abu Bakr. Thumma men, Thumma Umar. I want you to think about that. What's love have to do with it? The Prophet said, Let Tadakulu Jannah Hatta Tuk Minu Wala Tuk Minu Hatta Tahabu. You never go to Jannah until you, until you believe, and you never believe until you love one another. My question is, do you love one another? I'm going to find out in the I love this relationship with, with, with Abu Bakr and Umar. If you study Abu Bakr and Umar, their personality is different as night and day. Character, character, perfect. Character, but personality, different. Let me tell you something about the Prophet, peace and blessing of God. Listen to Omar. And you know why I love Omar? He kept, because he kept the 100. Some of you older guys don't know what kept the 100 mean. <laughs> but they know, right? Listen to what Omar said. Ya Rasulullah, la anta habu ilayyam min kuli shayin illa nafsi. You are more beloved to me than anyone except myself. Abu Bakr would never say that. The Prophet said, Waladi nafsi la hatta min You are not a true believer until you I am more beloved to you even than yourself. Umar's response, Al Anna Ya Rasul nafsi. Now you are more beloved to me than myself. Inshallah, in a few days we'll be coming to the month of Ramadan. And inshallah we'll be fasting. I remember one time we had fasted month of Ramadan and we were like in three or four days after Ramadan. And a brother came, he said, Imam Siraj, when is Ramadan? I said, brother, you miss Ramadan. It's over. I don't know anyone more conscious than Muslims of the time of the day. What time is it? Time for Fajr. What time is it? It's time for Asra. What's going on? Ramadan is coming soon. No one is more conscious than the Muslims than, than the people, than the Muslims. We love the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him. But I'm telling you, the Prophet loved us more than we love him. I know it's hard to believe. If you were given one wish, what would you wish for? I want you to think about that. I asked one of the students we were studying together, I said, if you had one wish, what would you wish for? He said, Imam, 
I would wish that me and my family go to Jannah. I said, I thought you would say that. The Prophet, peace and blessing, the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, you know what, this is very interesting. I asked for water and gave him this, this bottle. And right now, I'm thinking about my wife. She said to me one day, she says, Saraj, and my wife calls me two names. She either say Saraj or Imam. Whenever she says Saraj, there's a problem. <laughs> no, I figured it out. It took me a couple of years, right? Whenever she said Imam, she would say something good. <laughs> so then they say, so Saraj, whenever you're speaking and you're thirsty, never drink out of a bottle. That's why I love the brother. He, he's called them back. He said, always drink from a cup. I got this one. What would you wish for? The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said that Allah gave all the promise a dua that's answered. And all of them, they hurried to make their supplication. He said, I kept mine until Yom al Why? Wow. Think of this hadith. The Prophet, alayhi salat wa salam, raised his hands. Allahumma ummati ummati with the cat. Oh Allah, my ummah, my ummah, and he started to cry. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whenever he asks a question, he don't ask a question because he doesn't know the answer, he asks the question to teach a lesson. Ya Jibril, if have ila Muhammad, for as alu, man, you kick out. Oh Jibril, go down to Muhammad and ask him why is he crying? You know why it's funny? For us. The woman. You say you love the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him. I believe you do. Everything that he, he taught us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught him for us. And he was very serious about it. Why did the Prophet save his dua on Yom al -Qiyam? Because of us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him a special gift. It's going to be so horrible in Yom Al-Qiyam. And I want you to imagine all of those billions of people standing before Allah. Some of them standing for 50,000 years, waiting for the judgment. And so, who would they go to? How far? Ya Adam, anta Abu Bashar, khalqata bin nafsi. Ya Adam, anta Abu, uh, anta Abu Nas. Allah created you with his own hands and breathed into you through the spirit. Don't you see our problem? And Adam will say, Nafsi, 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 Ithra, Noah. My own self, my own self, go to Noah. And every prophet will say the same thing. I'm not fit for it. That's too loud. Finally, Ithra, Ila, Muhammad. I'm the, I'm the one, I'm the one. And he will do intercession for those of his ummah in the hellfire. To me, in the hellfire. Can I give you a picture on Yom al -Qiyama? Can I give you a picture of people in Jannah? Can I show you a picture according to the Quran? People in Jannah looking at the people of hellfire, the people of hellfire looking at the people in Jannah? And the people in general will say, Masalakakum fisakam. Why are you in the hellfire? Kolu lemakum al musalli. We're not those who used to make salah. Are you serious? Are you serious? You're not making salah. Allah is not talking to the Kafirs. No, I'm not talking about the Kafirs. Because they're not in hellfire because they're not in hellfire because they didn't make salat. They're in hellfire, they don't even believe. But they are Muslims who are in the hellfire who didn't make salat. 
We didn't feed the poor. We didn't feed the cat. I tell you another picture. I told you once in a while that people in general can see the people and talk to the people in hellfire. Right? Some people in general will see the people in hellfire. And they'll say, Rabbana, Ikhwanuna, Kenna Yusaluna Ma'ana. Oh Allah, our brothers, they used to pray with us. In the masjid, we came, we built a new masjid, they came, we saw them at every salat. They're in the hellfire. Kenu Yasuluna, Yasuluna Ma'ana. They used to fast with us. They used to make hajj with us. Now I'm asking myself the question. If they're saying this to Allah, what will Allah say to them? I'm saying, you know, probably Allah said, you don't know why they ain't there. Yeah, they came to the masjid, maybe they left the fold of Islam, maybe they used to pray, maybe they used to fast. Instead, Allah will say, Akhriju min hamin araftu. Take out of the hellfire those whom you recognize. So, brothers and sisters, this is why I talk to you today, inshallah. Number one, love one another. Help one another. Number two, don't forget the non-Muslims. The best Ummah ever. Khar Ummati Qarni Tumma Ladina Yibunum Tumma Ladina Yibunum The Prophet Lai Salat Wa Salaam The best of my Ummah is my generation. And then the generation that follows it, and then the generation that follows it. How many of you were born Muslims? Raise your hand. Look around, don't you look around. Good. How many like me converted to Islam in Jamaica? One, two, three, four. Of us. Think about that. Think about those who follow the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon them. In Jahli. And the Prophet wasalam, guided them to Islam. Look at any of you that Allah promised any of you, definitely you will be in Jannah. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, Abu Bakr fil Jannah, Umar fil Jannah, Uthman fil Jannah, Ali fil Jannah, Abdul Rahman ibn Al. He mentioned 10 Sahaba. Did he mention any of you? He didn't mention me. Did he mention you? Did he mention you? You? Did he mention you? Did he mention you? So we asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, help us to go to Jannah. But he mentioned, he said, the Prophet said, I saw myself in Jannah and I saw a palace so beautiful. I said, who belongs to this? Who he said? Who did he say? What palace? Who did it, who, who did it belong to? Umar. Have you read the hadith? No? Nobody read the hadith? Umar? And so the Prophet said, I started to go into it to see what it looked like. Until I remember the Ghayr of Umar, this dignity of Umar, and I didn't go in. And so when the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, told Umar, that Umar started to cry and said, Ya Rasulullah, how dare I put my Ghayr in front of you? Umar guaranteed Jannah. My point I'm saying to you right now is none of us are guaranteed Jannah. Because your deeds will be judged by your last deeds. We are having a number of Muslims leaving the fold of Islam. Wallahi, I can't conceive of any idea of why I would leave Islam. I can't see it. And I pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help to be, to be the same way. I close with this. Umar radiallahu anha, every time a delegation from Yemen came, he asked the question, is there a man among you named Uwais ibn Amir? Ten years he did that. Looking for this man, Uwais ibn Amir. This is Umar ibn Kitab, Khalifa. Until finally, a person said, yes, from Yemen. He said, are you from such and such tribe? Yes. He said, do you have a mother that, you know, you were faithful to? He said, yes. Did you used to have epilepsy and it was cured except for the size 
of a, of a dear hand? He said, yes. Why? Ten years, Umar looking for this. And he finally found him. You know what he said? The Prophet said, you will find this man from Yemen named Uwais ibn Amil. And Umar, when you find him, you ready for this? Ask him to ask Allah's forgiveness for you. Get it? Umar, guaranteed Jannah. Ten years looking for this person. For what? Ask him to ask Allah's forgiveness. So I say this in my conclusion, brothers and sisters. You know, we have a lot of work to do. A man came to the Prophet والسلام, and said, Mental sa'a ya Rasulullah. When is the hour? He said, Ma adjata la. What did you prepare for? And that's what it's all about. I pray for you. Um, I get nervous for you. And I hope that. You know why? Allah said, Let, let the kuna kala dina nas Allah for the sound of physical. Do not be like those who forgot Allah. Therefore, Allah calls them to forgive themselves. It's not how you begin the way, it's how you end the way. Don't tell me you were born anywhere. Tell me how you died. That the mutuna illa wa hantu musulmane. We have yet another opportunity, inshallah. In a few days, Ramadan will be here. Among many of the things that we do, so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to never, ever, ever let you leave this day. Don't be like those who came before. Can I tell you something about the United Kingdom that you may not know? Since 1960, 15,000 churches have been closed in the United Kingdom. 15,000 churches. See, ma'am, no, we Muslims, that won't happen to us. We're the same. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, he told us, Look at the names that we have. We have Muslims that name Dawood and, and, and Ismail and, 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 and uh, Suleiman and Isa and Noah. All of these names that we have, we have. And these people used to practice and practice like we did. That's why the brother mentioned, let the Kunu Kaladina, uh, uh, um, he said, um, Ya ya dhina aminu kutiba alaykum usiyam kama kutiba ala dhina min kabalikum. Though they, they fasted, they prayed. Well, what happened? Be careful. Why does Allah say in Quran, permitted for you are the chaste women of the people of the book? Permitted for you to eat the food of the people of the book. My similarity. And, your, and the sim similarity of the prophets who came before me is the similarity of a man who built a building and the building was perfectly put together. Everything except a brick was missing. And I am that brick. This is my advice. Be careful. You will follow those who came before you step by step and inch by inch, so that if they crawl in the hole of a lizard, you follow right behind them. Be careful. He made a prediction. And we don't want to be like those who forgot Allah. You know what? It'd be very difficult to forget Allah and pray five times a day. Can I ask you one question? When the Prophet ascended and Allah gave him the order to make salah, how many salats did he order him to make? 50. For the death to be valid. And I returned with it. 50 prayers a day. You know what that means? Every 28 minutes we have to make salah. And then when the prophet came down, who did he meet? Musa. What did Musa say? Go back and ask your Lord to reduce it because your Ummah won't be able to do it. And he went back and back until it was five. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us credit for 50. My point is, don't forget Allah. And when you're a Muslim, it's very difficult to forget Allah because you know what? Always something. 
You know, Shaban, I'm gonna fast a little bit, get ready for Ramadan. Here come Ramadan, reading the Quran, you know, have, you know, breaking iftar, going to the masjid, making hajj, doing all those things is difficult to forget Allah. But a lot of our people now, especially you, leave in Islam. Forgetting about Allah. I was in uh, Scotland, give me three more minutes. I was in Scotland a few years ago. And we were driving down Main Street. And it was like 2 o'clock in the afternoon on a Saturday. I looked to my right, I saw this big church and people going, going in. I said, uh, what denomination is that? People going on a Saturday at 1 o'clock. He said, Imam, that's not a church. It's a pub. It's a pub. It used to be a church. He said, the United Kingdom have a law that if something is built as a church, you can't change the structure. You can whatever you want, you can't change the structure. So we're driving down Main Street, he said, and that's not a church, 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 and that's not a church. I cannot conceive of masters closing down. I know one in New York, a few years ago, an email I said, Imam, we changed, we closing the masjid. I said, no, man, no, Imam, you can't change the, the masjid. You can't, you can't, you can't close the masjid. But it's very rare for masjid to be closed. My dua is that you never close the masjid. My dua is that none of you ever even dream about it. <coughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. Bless this come of Ramadan. Um, bless this project, inshallah. Uh, we're going to help you to raise some money, inshallah. Not today. May Allah bless you, brothers and sisters. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. We've got a few minutes for any questions you may have. And I thought I'll give you a bit of a time to ask um, any questions you may have on the talk that Imam Siraj gave. And then we'll take a break for Zohar. Not long. If you need to make wudu in the meantime, anyone, you can sneak out one at a time. That would be better. Any questions on the topic of our discussion today or what you've, whatever you've heard so far? Who's got a question? Sister Dad. So the sister said, don't forget the non-Muslims. What do you mean and what can we do? The whole point of this thing is the Prophet the Lady Salah Wasallam began with one person. Who did he talk to? Who did he talk down with? To? The non Muslims. We have an obligation to share this message, to give that one uh, to our neighbors. Someone gave that one to me, and I'm the and as a result of that, I became Muslim. Um, I have one advantage over you. This one. All of you born Muslim. Whoever believes in Jesus and then believes in me will have a double reward. Ha! Allah Akbar. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm serious. Listen. I, listen. I went to church. Me and my brother got an award for 100% attendance in church. What does that mean? No, no, no. What does it mean? It means that once a week I went to church. 50, 52 times a year, and I got an award from the church. Islam is nothing like that. Islam is like, you serious? If you take your religion seriously, you know, and I, and I, love, I love my mom. My, 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 my mom, my mother, my mother. I remember we were living in a project, right? I was seven years old on a Sunday morning. We get ready for the church, we get dressed for the church, right? And I want you to look at me. I'm going I'm to I'm try to mimic what I did then at seven years old. I said, Mom, why do you got to go to church anyway? Just like that. I'm going to take her belt. <laughs> she said, boom, boom. She said, now you understand why you got to go to church? I said, yes, ma'am. <laughs> but I didn't. And she put it to me. So I left. And then it came to us. Four months ago, six months ago, I gave my mother shahad. Allah, Allah. Eight, nine years old. Mom, now you understand why you gotta go to the masjid? 
<laughs> Stop it. <laughs> so the thing I'm saying is that my biggest disappointment, if I had one disappointment in this would be the lack of power. I think it's good to keep your religion for, for to me everything is Tao and invitation is a Tao. Even Shaitan, he does his Tao for the people who have to be. You'd be surprised, and I know a lot of times people share that are shocked to go out to people to invite them to the religion. You can go there many ways. Allah bless me. Alhamdulillah, many, many people, you know, could have not taken shahada. But at least you have to make the effort. The constant dripping of water on a stone will drill a hole in the stone. Not a fire, not a tornado, a drip. Talking to your neighbors. I talk to my neighbors. You don't have to be ashamed. They're not rejecting you. You'd be surprised some people who talk to them about Islam and the Muslims. Just look at those, you know, Aisha Rabbi Rai asked her husband the message of Aisha Hassan. Had a ta'alik a yom and kenna shakam in yom ho. Has it been a day more difficult to go? And the other, you have to understand, it, in, in many ways, the Muslims were winning, the battle was won. But because someone disobeyed the messenger of Allah, they lost the battle. And about 61, 62 Muslims died, including the prophets of Muhammad. Is the day more difficult than that? He said, yes. What was more difficult than that? The day when he went to Taif. What are you going to Taif for? To invite the people to Islam. What did they do to him? They threw stones at him. And one time the prophet, peace and blessing, the father said that there was a prophet that was beaten by his people so much that his face began to bleed and he wiped the blood from his face. Allahumma ikfir li kawmi fa'innahum la ya'lamun. Oh Allah, forgive my people because they don't know. People said, some have said, that the prophet was talking about himself. Allahu Akbar. But he goes to Taif and the people beat him up and they run him out of town because he's giving them dogma, things that we don't want to do. We don't want to invite the people, and the prophet is inviting the people, and they're running him out of town, and as he was walking, he noticed a shower. And he looked up, and behold, it was the angel of He said, Allah has heard what your people have done, and has sent the angel of the mountain for you to order them what you like. And the angel of the mountain gave salams to the Prophet and said, I am the angel of the mountains. Allah has heard what your people have done. Give me the commandment. And he said, I pray that Allah from their loins will come those who worship Allah and not worship anyone with them. Now, I thought about this shape for a long time. Why was that a difficult moment? Because they were so long time they didn't I don't think that was it. This is my opinion. The Prophet of Islam realized that if Allah wanted to destroy them, he would have done it. To find out what you want. And he ain't angry because his God is God. And look at all the people who became Muslims who came to the Prophet of Islam. So my advice. You, my humble request, let us have programs for non Muslims. That's our job. Is our no more questions. Thank you. Imam has already announced no more questions. You have time, don't worry, relax. We have, um, so we're going to take a pause now, a breather. Um, we will take a break for Dohar prayer. Please listen to the break carefully. So please do not start arguing and talking. Listen to the instructions very clearly. Brothers, We'll face that way, we'll make our lines for the first three lines, we'll complete that, we'll pray. The sisters, we'll complete the last three lines and we inshallah pray. If you are not praying, you stay in the hall and you stay quiet and you stay silent while we pray. After prayer is over, do your sunnah and inshallah resume back where we are, turn this way and we'll continue with our program. Imam Siraj will have him back again inshallah to do the dua, to finish our program. He has a flight tomorrow, so we will of course 
take him to his hotel once we finish. Don't worry, he's not the only one who has a flight to catch. Unfortunately, I've also got to catch a flight straight after the program. So our program will definitely finish sharp at three o'clock, no matter what happens, because we have got to go. But if we finish before, of course, you will know that we finished before. We've got a barbecue going on outside that's been prepared. Turkish style kofta burgers, I think. They're selling them. Of course, the money comes to the masjid. Inshallah, please help. And we'll also ask you to donate dig deep into your pockets. We need to make sure this masjid becomes a center, not only for Muslims, but also for non-Muslims of Southgate and the surrounding areas. It would be a tragedy if non-Muslims do not benefit from this center while we enjoy the benefit of the masjid. It would be a big tragedy. So inshallah, together we'll do that. So now we'll take a break for Dhuhr. What time is it right now? One o'clock. Say exactly five past one, we'll start our jama'ah. Five past one. If anybody needs to make wudu, please go orderly, one at a time, not all of you rushing at the same time. And we come back, inshallah, and we'll pray exactly at 105. In the wudu area, there is one toilet for brothers, one wudu area, as you enter on your left-hand side. The right-hand side one is for sisters. So please, brothers, make sure you understand there is left-hand side, which is the brothers, and the right-hand side is for sisters. Remember, all of this is temporary. We don't have enough space yet. Sorry, we've got plen plenty of space, but we don't have enough money to develop everything as we want. Inshallah, with money, we'll uh, provide you more, more facilities. Let's take a break. We where is our muaddin who is going to give the adhan? Where is he? Yeah, Ahla, bismillah. He is our wonderful uh, brother, Ala from Egypt. Uh, but he is wonderful. He's his, his neighbor and he's our muaddin. He's also an imam and he's also a teacher. Bismillah. Alaykum <laughs> Allah 